Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss. And Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is one of my favorite films of the year. The story of Hollywood's darkest night retold as a bloody Tarantino fairy tale, the way all history should have played out. With critically praised performances by Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, and Margot Robbie, Tarantino's acclaimed ninth film is available in stores and online on 4K Ultra HD, Blu-ray, DVD, and digital, along with 20 minutes of additional scenes and an exclusive behind the scenes look at the craft that made this film so great. The production design, the cinematography, the costume design, the cars, I'm gonna break down all this additional footage, the cool details that you might have overlooked in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Spoiler warning if you have not seen it yet. And thank you to Sony Pictures for sponsoring this video. Sony was nice enough to send me the different versions of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Each has some amazing collectibles included. I'm gonna get to all of them, but this is the National Blu-ray. And it contains, if you were to open it up here, both the DVD with the amazing film and all the bonus material. But if you're a real Tarantino fan, a true collector, a tarantino wino that's probably not the name, I just made it up. Check out this limited collector's edition. This thing is awesome. It opens up like a 45. It includes this Mad Magazine mini edition. It's like in universe. It includes some like art of Rick Dalton the way Mad Magazine would have shown it. It includes this vintage poster that will be going up on my wall. And very cool, an actual 45 vinyl record. It's got two songs on the soundtrack. And you'll notice how the art shows Rick Dalton's appearance on the Hullabaloo show, which brings us to our first additional scene, in which Rick sings Jim Lowe's Green Door on Hullabaloo, which was an actual NBC musical variety series in the 60s. If you look into the lyrics of Green Door, the song actually reflects reflects Rick's situation in this film because it's about a singer who can't sleep because the music coming from a nearby club. So he goes over, knocks on its green door, but then gets turned away from the private club. Rick, similarly, is the next door neighbor to history, an outsider looking in at the party. And in this film's fairy tale twist ending to the fate of Sharon Tate and the Manson family, Rick finally gets admitted into this private party. Also included in the bonus material are commercials for Old Chattanooga Beer, which is the brand that Cliff Booth drinks in this movie, and Tarantino's recurring in-universe cigarette label Red Apple. There's also a clip from Rick's Western series, Bounty Law, featuring Tarantino collaborator Michael Madsen as a sheriff. That episode is sponsored by Red Apple and Twinkies, which also appear in the additional scene that I was most excited to see, an extended scene showing Charles Manson continuing to look for Terry Melcher after he scoped out the house with Jay Sebring in it. Terry Melcher was the music producer and former resident of the Polanski Tate House. Manson rambles on to a manager about signing him. He mentions his brief friendship with Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys, which actually did exist before Manson and his women were kicked out of the house. Manson claims to have written a Beach Boys song, but the manager shoes him away, while his dog, Bandit, won't stop barking, perhaps foreshadowing Cliff's dog, Brandy, attacking Manson's followers later in the film. Manson heads back to the Twinkie truck that he was driving, and he eerily senses Cliff watching him from the roof next door, and he gives Cliff the scariest wave, and Cliff doesn't return it, so Manson suddenly freaks out with like insane karate moves and profanities. Now there are two more additional scenes to check out, both from the set of the new CBS Western that Rick guest stars in, Lancer. The first shows Timothy Oliphant and Luke Perry as the Lancer brothers as they meet the young Mary Bella. The director cranes in and compliments a girl saying, Haley Mills, eat your heart out, a nod to the child actors from the original Parent Trap. Now this director is Sam Wanamaker, played by Nicholas Hammond. Wanamaker was a famous theater director known for his restoration of the Globe Theater in London. The second Lancer additional scene is a one-take chat between Wanamaker and Rick about the acting craft. It's pretty hilarious. Wanamaker tells Rick about a new script that he's writing called The Executioner, where you don't know whether the lead character is good or bad or an innocent bystander until the very end much like Rick and Cliff in this film, who come off as innocent bystanders, but actually have a pivotal role in the fate of history here. Now, if you're a collector, you may also be interested to know that this Once Upon a Time in Hollywood Blu-ray release also includes gifts with purchase offered at retail at Best Buy. You'll get a collectible steel book and an image of Brandy. And then in the Target one, there's an in-world film magazine with articles about Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth and Hollywood nights parties. And then at the Walmart one, it comes with these exclusive collectible postcards. There's Rick Dalton, Ringo, Green Go, Opera Zone Dynamite, Nebraska Gym, Tanner, and the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood illustrated poster. The same way that the film immerses us in Hollywood in the 1960s, these bonus gifts keep that party going. And I love that the film includes all these ways to appreciate it because really what made it so great is the whole look and the design. Tarantino grew up in Hollywood in the 60s and 70s, and the way that the film suddenly revives the Hollywood history works so well because the two hours that preceded the twist worked so hard to make us feel that we were actually watching real, authentic history unfold. 
The documentaries included in the Blu-ray release explore all the craft that went into that authenticity. Production designer Barbara Link discusses how she shut down Hollywood Boulevard for four blocks to redecorate store windows and restore each of the old marquees on Theater Row so that they'd list the films that were playing in August 1969. Customer Ariane Phillips discusses how she met with Sharon Tate's sister to get samples of Sharon Tate's clothes and jewelry and how she recreated Tate's famous snakeskin trench coat that she wore to the Rosemary's Baby premiere, which we see Margot Robbie wear in this movie. And if you're into classic cars, definitely be sure to check out the documentary with the film's car coordinators, Stephen Butcher and Leonard Jefferson, who snuck in a ton of historical Easter eggs into the film. Cliff's car has no hubcaps because he's a stuntman, and stunt drivers wouldn't put hubcaps on their cars. And they reused the Cadillac from Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs as the hero car that Cliff drives Rick in, and Roman Polanski's car is a 1930s MG Roadster, which Tarantino selected from the film Model Shop. And for the Manson family car, Butcher and Jefferson actually tracked down the real car driven by Tex Watson that night. The collector offered to let them use it for the film, but they felt it would be too morbid to shoot the actors in the actual car, so they took pictures and recreated the car so that the scratches and rust matched perfectly. All of this design was shot beautifully by the director of photography, Bob Richardson, who used lots of film varieties, 70 millimeter, 35 millimeter, the episodes of Bounty Law in 16 black and white, home movie footage shot in Super 8. As a film about the film and TV industry, all the movies that the characters watched in the movie needed to look like movies did when you watched them back then. The featurette goes into one of Tarantino's craziest shots. The one that cranes from Rick in his pool over the roofs of the houses down to Tate and Polanski next door as they head out for the night. This is one of the most critical shots of the film because it lays out the geography of Rick's life relative spatially to the history of Sharon Tate and the Mansons. The unbroken long take synchronizes these separate timelines to set up the precision of the way they collide in the final act to change Hollywood history with a fairy tale ending that it deserved. An eventful but relatively non-historic night now, so that Tate and the others could define their legacies the way that they should have been able to. Again, Quentin Tarantino's acclaimed ninth film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, is now available on 4K Ultra HD, Blu-ray, DVD, and digital, with critically praised performances from Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, and loaded with over 20 minutes of additional scenes and exclusive access to the set. Get your copy today. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVoss, and subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>